Hey everyone, you with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Well, this morning I want to talk about Battery Day, which is promised to be a game-changing event. That's the day that Elon Musk has promised uh, Tesla will announce a new battery. It's going to be a million mile battery apparently, and it's going to be under that magical price of 100 US dollars per kilowatt hour. That has been agreed universally that if the battery can be cheaper than that, then it'll become competitive with petrol powered cars basically. So Tesla has promised, well, it's been reported and rumored that the battery that'll be announced will be about 80 US dollars per kilowatt hour. It'll start production basically in China. It's a joint venture with a Chinese company and it'll be installed basically in uh, Tesla vehicles produced and sold in China to start with and then brought over to the US and I assume worldwide after that. So at, at 80 US dollars per kilowatt hour, like I said, it's gonna be basically cheaper than an equivalent petrol powered car. Uh, the other good thing about this new battery too is that it has low or no cobalt. Uh, cobalt is one of the um, most expensive parts of the battery and also, um, you know, also cobalt is one of those components that's got a bad rap recently because it does depend on um, intensive labor, uh, usually in countries where people aren't paid very well and potentially using child labor if you read the news. So if we can use less cobalt, then um, it's less reliant on exploitation uh, around the world, which would be better obviously for, for components uh, for electric vehicles. So for a long time now, one of the barriers for uh, purchasing an electric vehicle is uh, has been the price. You know, traditionally and conventionally, um, an electric vehicle for an equivalent size and range is about double the price, if not more, for uh, than, an, than a petrol power car. For example, a Model 3, which is the cheapest Tesla you can buy in Australia, starts at about $80,000 here in New South Wales. Um, I think, you know, if you can, you can get a top line Camry for about $40,000. So you're talking double the price uh, for an equivalent range electric vehicle over a petrol powered car. Even the cheapest electric vehicle I can think of in the Australian market, which is the Nissan Leaf, I would say, Nissan Leaf or Hyundai Ioniq. Uh, you know, that's, that's still $50,000, so not, not cheap by anyone's uh, measure. So we can get a car that is on par with, say, a Camry, which is a popular family type car in Australia, like for forty thousand dollars. Then, then we're in the game. Then electric vehicles are in the game. So that's one barrier: price. Second barrier people talk about is uh, range. I mean, most not well, not most, but a lot, of, a lot of new electric vehicles now look. Are you looking at four hundred kilometer range at the very least? Uh, the SR Plus in real world ranges through 50 to 400. That's that's about all you need really for day to day driving for a start and also road trips. The third thing, the third barrier is um, charging time. So 95 to 99 percent of the time, in my personal situation, I use my home charger. It doesn't affect me at all in terms of waiting to charge. I don't sit there with my charging cable waiting for it to finish because I plug it in at night and by the morning it's done. Um, because I don't drive that much during the day. So most Australians, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, drive 50 to 100 kilometers per day. If you've got a 400 kilometer range car, that's no issues. You're gonna plug it in every night, charge it to 80%, you're done. Um, but I guess the edge case is the road trip. Um, people take maybe one to two road trips per year. And I would say again, 90% of the time, it's going to be a family trip where you, you will stop for a, a meal or a, or a drink or something or a snack and you're going to charge for 20, 25 minutes. By the time you finish your drink, go to the bathroom, etc., you're done. So I would say if you're looking at the standard deviation curve, you know, one to two standard deviations outside the mean, an electric vehicle is going to serve you fine. No problem because you're one, charge every night, you don't drive that much and two if you take a road trip you're going to take a leisurely road trip generally speaking the edge cases is where i guess the issues arise where people who have to travel a lot sales reps whatever they need to be quick about their business they need to charge quickly potentially so 
for the edge case type things then yeah so charging speed is an issue um, even even the top charging speed uh, in Australia now is the Model 3 performance you can charge it 195 to 200 I've, I've shown that you can charge at 195 I think it was the record I set um, or thereabouts that's still a 20 to 25 minute top up from 20 to 80 percent so yeah sure that's not as fast as a petrol powered top up which is five minutes right so yeah I mean I don't, I don't know how much faster charging is going to be uh, particularly if you've got a, a denser battery that Tesla's thinking of bringing out um, it's going to negate any savings with a faster charger because you've got a denser bigger battery pack so uh, that's something that I'm not sure what, what Tesla's going to announce on battery day but something will be interesting to, to hear about uh, when the time comes so there are three barriers price range um, and and charging speed um, I mean other barriers like you know performance that's not an issue like I think it's quite well known now that electric vehicles uh, generally will outperform their ice counterparts for an equivalent type car uh, insurance you know it's not much more I've shown that as well in my videos um, what else availability it's not that long a waiting list to get one um, oh okay safety yeah they're very safe uh, reliability I, I don't think I've serviced the model 3 yet in six seven months this car has been hasn't been regularly serviced uh, it doesn't need to be you don't service your phone or device um, the other issue is also battery longevity so Tesla's thinking of bringing this million mile battery out yeah that's gonna last that's gonna last a long time right I mean not many people drive their cars for a million miles generally speaking um, if you don't if you don't supercharge or DC charge your car regularly then then your battery will last longer as well if you don't top up to 100% every night as well that's also gonna make your battery last longer I've shown with my video videos that your battery my battery is only degraded two to three percent in the last four years so if you look after your battery uh, then you'll be fine as well in terms of longevity recycling that's the other thing people talk about the fact that batteries can't be recycled I think they can um, you can certainly repurpose them there are there are companies out there now repurposing batteries and again you can turn into into a battery for your home to store energy from the solar system that you have uh, that can be recycled to make new cars there are, there are lots of options here guys I mean there are more options than a petrol powered car I would think too in the long term um, electricity is coal powered yep sure it's coal powered now it'll get cleaner as the grid is cleaner with time it doesn't happen with petrol powered cars you can't make fuel cleaner uh, not as much as the renewable energy anyway for electric vehicles so look I can go on and on there are lots of barriers so to speak so what I want you to do guys in the comments I want you to write tell me the top five barriers you think currently to electric vehicle ownership um, and tell me if battery day will help alleviate the number one I think the number one reason why people don't go for electric cars now which is the price um, if you think there's another barrier that's higher than price for example charging speed or range uh, then let me know put that in the comments too but I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts if you're on the verge of buying an electric vehicle um, how much cheaper does the SR Plus in Australia, the Model 3, need to be for you to be comfortable in buying one? So currently it's $80,000 in New South Wales. How much cheaper does that need to be for you to pull the plug? Sorry, for you to, what's the word? Pull the trigger, I should say, uh, to buy one. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little vlog of mine. And I'm looking forward to battery day. I hope you are as well. It's going to be very exciting to hear about it in the next month or so. Uh, otherwise, stay safe. Uh, look after yourselves. And until next time, happy charging.